Hi, thanks for joining me. Uh, so today I'm going to do another anime that I watched uh, video. Um, the whole thing that kicked this off was that uh, I'm I'm working on a backlog. I realized that I've got you know a lot of anime that I hadn't seen. It was way more than I thought it was. Um, I forget the exact number, but it was in the 90s of kind of individual units. You know that might be a, a complete box set that was sold you know all as one, or individual episodes of a DVD you know series on DVD that I picked up. But it was quite a lot. So um, I just checked, and I've managed to narrow that list down to 64 um, by what I'm watching. So it's uh, very good. I'm definitely making progress on that. Um, but uh, to start off with here, um, I'd been watching Golf Horse. So this is uh, another Golf Horse here, um, Rhea Golf Horse. I don't know that I'd ever watched this before. Um, I think it's easy to get conflated with uh, with Earth Chapter because it feels a little bit similar. Um, it's kind of a post-apocalyptic setting, uh, and this one reminds me a bit of the second uh, Golf Horse. I forget what the subtitle for that is, but um, it's you know it also feels kind of small in scope, despite the fact that uh, it is portraying you know something that that. Uh, influences kind of all of humanity in in some ways, um, but this is a it's very post apocalyptic setting, and um, you know it really just uh, could be based in the same you know golf course universe um, that the other ones were, just at a period of time when um, when you know some sort of apocalyptic war had happened, some sort of a world war kind of a thing, um, you know. So it, it still kind of keeps with that. Um, uh, the war, sort of war theme, and you know, sort of especially in dealing with nuclear war and that kind of stuff. Um, but uh, you know, I found this to be pretty much the weakest of the golf horses that I've seen so far. And uh, it's not really to say that it's not enjoyable or that it's not good. Um, it's it's pretty good. Like it's it's all right. Um, I just didn't um, I didn't you know love this. And and I did kind of love the the first golf horse and and re and definitely enjoy the rest of them. This this you know it was it was all right. Um, definitely not bad, um, but you know it's really not not quite up to the level of the the rest of them for me. Um, I don't know how um, that's going to go with Earth Chapter. Uh, I remember that one. You know, maybe that sticks in my head as one of the ones where it's you know uh, maybe wasn't my favorite thing. So um, we'll see how that goes. But Rhea Galfers was okay. Um, it's also like I don't think it's that long. It's uh, uh, another one that's an hour. So, you know, interesting parallels between that and um, whatever the second second Golf Force is. Um, so the other one I saw was Golf Force uh, New Era. This is really cool because I had I'd never seen this before either. And uh, let's see, this is from... I, I think you were getting into the 90s at this point. This is from 92, 93. Um, and this one was interesting because at first I... I just really wasn't on board with how it was telling the story. Um, you know, again, it's very different. Um, it's it almost feels more like Lily Cat in a way. Once you get to a certain point where um, you almost have that same kind of alien feeling, where you're on a ship, uh, you know, the characters are on a ship, and and there's like some sort of monster there, kind of hunting them down. Uh, it was interesting, but the whole um, beginning part is more of like a disaster movie. You're kind of uh, in the midst of what is possibly an apocalypse going on, and so you're, you're sort of following the characters dealing with that, and, you know, the characters are very confused and they're scared. Um, so just sort of going along with them on that ride is um, is not really what I've enjoyed about, you know, other Golf Horse um, shows. And uh, so at first I was just kind of like, wow, you know, I just, I don't know if I can really get behind this. It's just not super interesting. Um, but once you start getting to the end, um, you know, and I kind of figured out, like, what sort of stuff they were they were dealing with again. Uh, you know, similar themes, I think, but uh, I realized this is almost like um, uh, Eternal Story in reverse. So, you know, in a way you have humanity and, you know, they were basically trying to find a way for, like, two you know, disparate species to um, to survive kind of harmoniously. And this is more that, okay, well, you know, some sort of harmony was reached, and then it, it sort of turned on itself and kind of self-destructed, and now we need to kind of go back to, um, to, to like, getting away from this. And 
um, figuring out how how we can sort of st- start over again. Um, so it was interesting. Once I realized this is this is eternal story in reverse, and and it, maybe that's a little bit of a spoiler because like um, part of part of what was enjoyable, I think, was just kind of discovering the ending. And I don't I don't know I don't know if I gave too much away or not, but um, but by the time I saw the end, I was sort of like, okay, you know, I'm more on board with this than I was when I first started watching it. This this was pretty good. Um, I kind of liked new uh, new era uh, golf course. Um, next up, we have uh, something that you guys probably remember from one of my recent uh, more recent pickups videos. I just popped in a blue gender, the warrior, the warrior, um, and this seems to me I'm not 100 percent sure, but like a a feature cut of a series. So sort of like the. Um, uh, the first Ava movie, I forget what it was called, um, but they basically just kind of condensed the whole series down into a movie. Um, that's what this feels like. And, uh, you know, having not seen the series before, this works pretty well as a movie. Um, I think, uh, you know, the, this, the series probably plays out like this as well, where uh, it seems, um, you know, really slow, like very deliberately paced, um, kind of focused on the characters and their interactions and just their kind of uh, moment to moment um you know what's what's going on with them and um you know it it ends up being this interesting uh it feels like a story that I've heard before and honestly I think in tone somehow it reminded me of um uh Saishu Heiki Kanojo um like she the ultimate weapon if you guys have ever seen that um it it it's not really similar in in subject um, but I know something about the tone of it kind of reminded me of that. I guess because you have um, these two people in in what is a, essentially like a wartime uh, situation that um, I, you know are in this case they're they're I think they're kind of from different um, uh, they're 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 from different like cultures, like basically from different time periods. It's sort of like a, a peacetime and a wartime, and they're trying to sort of reconcile their their differences, and, and there's like this kind of romance, you know, I think that that's happening. Um, and it's just sort of a, uh, you know, a story about the characters kind of coming to terms with their own, um, you know, kind of small internal conflicts, I guess. So, um I don't know. I don't feel like I'm pan, like painting a very good picture of this. I guess suffice to say, the 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 bulk of what goes on is that there are like these aliens that have taken over Earth and they're fighting them. So so that that's what's happening. And then the subtext is kind of what I was talking about before. Um, but I guess I liked the pacing of this. I liked how it's kind of slow. I liked how they sort of focused on the characters and and um, and just you know this these situations that they got themselves into and kind of you know what. What what are human rights in 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 a wartime and just you know some of these themes that they that they focused on and you know I guess honestly when it comes down to it I mean I talk about a lot of anime being you know informed particularly by World War Two but uh, it seems like a lot of this stuff I'm watching is really just informed uh, and and talking about war in general and, th- and this was just um, you know, this was good to watch I I, I liked it um, definitely uh, enjoyed uh, Blue Gender so uh, so that was that was pretty cool. Um, next up, something that I've had uh, for for quite a while. This was actually a gift um, from a very good online uh, friend of mine, and uh, really nice of him. He just kind of like sent these to me, just hey, you know, here have these. Um, and come to find out, they're um, they're OAVs. So it's it's pretty cool because this is the whole OAV series of this particular uh, thing. There were m- multiple series of OAVs for this. Um, what I'm talking about is Soccer Wars. Um, now, I've always had an interest in this series because it's um, it's really based on a series of games by Sega. Um, actually, I think these are by Red Red Ent- Entertainment or Red Corporation or whatever they're called. I'll put a annotation up here so you guys know exactly what they're called um, as the the developer. But anyway, they um, they they did some anime uh, here. There's some. Um, I don't remember what what it all is, but I think there's a TV series and, like I said, multiple OAV series and a movie. So anyway, this uh, I, I literally never played any of the games or seen any of the anime before I watched this. Uh, familiar with the character designs, and um, I don't remember who the artist is, but the character designs really remind me of um, 
the guy that does uh, uh, Oh My Goddess or Oh My Goddess Oh My Gami Sama. Um, I don't think that it's him. I guess if it is, I'll make a note of that. Um, but but it reminds me of that. So if you're familiar with that, you 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 know kind of know I guess what to expect visually from the style. Um, and the the world building in this is really interesting too. It's very sh- strained. It's it's essentially it seems like a steampunk alternate um, reality. Where, you know, again, you have like these demons, uh, kind of similar to the aliens, uh, in here that, um, you know, we just have to fight against now and then. So they have these steam powered, um, mecha suits, of course, that these, um, I, I don't, I don't know the details on it because I'm sure they go into it in the games, but, um, this troop of, of actors, uh, it seems like almost an all female kind of like, um, I forget what the all-female acting troupe is in Japan. Ta- uh, talk uh, something. Taz. There's a Z in there. I'll, again, God, my memory is horrible. Um, whatever they are, uh, it reminds me of that. So you basically have this cast of female characters that are they're all actresses and they and they perform on stage and then they also, um, you know, several of them in particular, it seems like, are very, um, you know, sort of versed in like martial arts and warfare. And uh, and they pilot these these robot mecha things and I don't know fight fight against demons and that sort of thing. But um, what's I guess what's cool about these OAVs and I don't know if that's this is very distinct from other OAVs in in the series or or the TV series or what. But um, this is very character focused and it doesn't really focus on action much. Um, there is a little bit. Um, but you know this this won me over. Really, uh, right off the bat, I think, when, um, you know, just the opening scenes of the, the first, uh, episode here, um, just sort of set the stage of, you know, the, the, this weird time period where it's, it's kind of historical too. So it's, it's not only steampunk, but it's sort of set in like, you know, it almost seems like when, um, Japan was kind of first becoming more open to the West and more industrialized and stuff. Um, but you have these, these weird, um, steam, uh, I shouldn't say that. That's, that's older. That's in like the 1800s. This is more like kind of maybe like very post, post World War II. Except that it's not because it's an alternate reality. Anyway, suffice to say, this is set like maybe a hundred years ago or, or 80 years ago or so in terms of a, like a comparative time period. And, um, it's, it's good because the characters, like you you start right off with um you know one of the characters is kind of struggling with it seems like being a a um a combatant and and a re- like a um a very uh skilled um you know soldier or or warrior of some sort and um and sort of i guess living in this more peaceful this more peaceful life and kind of reconciling that with also you know they have these responsibilities it seems like to um, you know to to be ready for combat um, and then, you know, just sort of the, the little kind of struggles of the individual characters in this, you know, this, this troupe, this acting troupe and stuff. Um, and it's strange because I don't feel like any of it's very identifiable, you know, like I don't feel like I can identify with, you know, a- actresses in particular or with, um, you know, the whole steampunk thing or the, the slightly historical alternate reality setting or any of it. But the characters are, I think, just so relatable and, um, you know, they, they, they just have such f- funny and interesting, like, character dynamics between them that it, it sucks you in. And I loved this. Um, the animation quality is pretty good on this. Um, it, it caught me off guard a little bit where I was like, oh, this is, like, really decent animation. And I realized, oh, okay, this is an OAV. And they put some care into it. There's even some CG in this, which I think was handled really well for the, the time period. I mean, we're talking... 1999, uh, 2002, you know, sort of that, that era. 2002 is when the DVD came out, but this was produced in 1999, and for that, like, they handled it really well. Um, you know, and I just think, like, the, um, the, just everything about this in terms of the, you know, the way it was paced and the way it was animated and everything, it's, um, it's, it's wonderful. I really enjoyed watching this. This is uh, just three episodes on here, um, and then there's, uh, one more. Here, this is the uh, the second volume. Three episodes on here. Now, unfortunately, there was a scratch on the disc, so I had a little trouble with the, the very last episode. And the very last episode was a little... They're all actually pretty um, 
told kind of sentimentally, where the uh, kind of the main character, I guess, probably from the games, I think this is the character that you play, because um, they do have a little bit of a like a romantic adventure element to them, I think, but they're like strategy RPGs. Um, this that main character um, is is starts off each of these OAV episodes looking at a um, a particular item that they're kind of like nostalgically. Uh, reminiscing about, and that's that's really what the episode is about. And um, these just they're they're tremendously charming. I, I really liked this a lot. So uh, for whatever reason, this bizarre alchemy happens, and uh, and these these just turn out being really great. So very glad um, that I watched those in particular, and uh, it's got me watching the movie. And um, I'm probably going to try playing the PlayStation 2 game. Before I get more of the games, but I really, I really have wanted the the Sakura Wars games for a long time, and just watching this anime has really kind of kickstarted that interest in me. So I definitely want to get more of the anime too and check that out. So um, the last couple things that I've been watching are not um, DVDs. Um, watching some stuff on Crunchyroll. I took a pretty big break from that for a while, but um, I think Sailor Moon Crystal has has sucked me in. And uh, you know, I'd watched the first episode or two. Um, I think maybe just the first one. I guess it was maybe the first two last time. And uh, I'm up to episode, I think I've seen six of them now. So the seventh one is out, and I just I haven't watched that one yet. But um, it's it's dragging me in, you know. Um, and I couldn't help but thinking while I was watching the episodes, um, they did feel a little, I don't know, like a little dry or a little... Um, they're, they're not... Like, the, the designs are kind of nice, but the animation seems not that good, actually. Um, and that's not that unusual, and it's not that great a sin for, you know, an, an anime series. Um, you know, sometimes these things are, um, are not, you know, uh, that well done. And this, um, you know, I think it looks pretty nice, but somehow it does feel a little, um, it's just not super great animation, I guess. But that aside, um, the, the, the charm of the show is still kind of sucking me in. Um, so, you know, I'm having fun with it so far. It's Sailor Moon, it's Sailor Moon. So, um, you know, definitely enjoying that. And um, I also started watching just a random series, because I don't even really know why. But um, I literally picked this because, you know, I, I look at the stuff that's kind of popular in the you know, the popular uh, section, just to kind of see what, what other people are watching. And I liked the character designs in this. Um, and it was called, uh, or it is called, um, Monthly Girls Nozaki-kun. Um, and it's just such a, a great premise uh, that it really sucked me in. Um, where, basically, this girl, and, and it feels a bit shoujo-ish, just in terms of, like, there's a female main character, and there's a lot of, like, kind of bishonen uh, characters around her, um, but she basically just has a crush on this one guy, um, Nozaki, um, Nozaki-kun, and uh, so she she bravely tries to confess her feelings to him, and what happens is she messes it up. So she basically says, like, I am a fan of you. And he's like, oh, okay. So then he draws her an autograph and hands it to her. You know? <laughs> and you're just like, what? But it turns out that he is a professional manga artist, and he draws shoujo manga. So <laughs> it's it's such a f- hysterical premise. He's in high school, too. Um, and, you know, she even, like, she continues to screw it up. She's like, no, no, I want to be with you, you know, or something like that. And he's like, oh, okay. And so he, in, like, invites her to his place, and he's like, all right, here's, you know, here's one of my pages, start, start filling in the blacks, you know. <laughs> so she, she essentially becomes his, uh, his, like, manga assistant. And, uh, through that she meets, you know, various other characters that are, um, like, also helping him with his, uh, his manga and um and different different characters uh, in the high school and uh, it's just it's a lot of fun the characters are really funny and um and the humor is just um is sharp you know i think it's just it's so far it's really quite um quite entertaining so um you know i'm having a lot of fun with that one uh, i have a feeling that that might have been something from uh, like last season because um there's 12 episodes of it out now um, whereas, like, Sailor Moon, like, there, there's only, you know, six, seven episodes out in there, and they're still working on that, so. Anyway, um, that is what I watched. 
Um, I hope that this was enjoyable for you, and I hope you'll join me again for uh, more anime and video game related videos. Thank you for watching.